Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an assembly. An assembly is used when you have multiple components and you need to bring them all together to make up one complete product. Okay, go File or New and instead of Parts we are going to choose Assembly. And I'm going to call this um, glide underscore keyring underscore assembly. Okay, uh, this is a keyring I've uh, LED keyring that I've designed as multiple components, so I can show you how it works. Press OK and you're greeted with a very similar um, work, work place which has front plane, top plane and right plane. You'll notice they have assemblies, assembly top, and assembly front, assembly right. Okay. We are not modelling in this, we have done our modelling. Our models exist wherever you've saved them. So now I'm going to create bring in a part, press assemble and you need to go and find your parts wherever you've saved them. So I will go to my Creo modeling file and mine is in keyring project, glide keyring. Okay, and these are my models for the glide keyring. Um, so I'm going to bring in the base part first. Okay. Now at this point you'll see that maybe the planes will have changed because they relate to what you're bringing in. And I will put my part here by clicking left click. Okay. Now what I have, these are the planes for the assembly and these are the planes from when I modelled the parts. If you left click once I'm left clicking on the right plane, the datum plane, from when I modelled, and it creates, then move my mouse and it creates a string or something I can attach. And I'm going to attach it to the right plane in the assembly. Here, it is naturally chosen distance. It is 43 millimeters, 43.42 millimeters away from that plane. So if I put zero in that plane, it will move and you will see it's in line. Using distance, if I chose not to do distance and chose coincident, it would do the same, but I would not have control over it by putting measurements in. So if I choose front and then select front, okay, this time it's chosen coincident. It's up to you which one you want. If I choose coincident or I choose distance, just to show you I can control it by movement. Yeah. So distance is actually very useful, especially if you want to do an exploded view of all the components later on. I've got one more plane to attach. I've got the datum plane top to assembly plane top. Okay, and again that's done coincident. That's absolutely fine, but I'm going to choose distance and zero. You'll notice the model has changed colour and it's now saying status fully constrained that is what we want when it's fully constrained it means that when I bring in another component this part is locked in space so nothing they're not going to move if we if we start moving things around it cannot move so it cannot move it's fully constrained so I tick OK so I know the base is there right I need to bring in my next part which I will then attach to this assembly. I will choose the LED this time that I've modelled previously. 
in comes the LED. Now the LED, I've just clicked to drop it off. The LED is facing the wrong way. To make my life easier, it's best if I turn it around and get it roughly in the position I need it before trying to constrain it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose, this time I'm not going to choose any of the planes, I'm actually going to choose component surfaces. So I'm going to choose this cylindrical surface simply because I know it's touching that cylindrical surface. So the string is coming with me, the attachment, and I can select the surface I want that cylinder to touch. It's coincident. So what it has done is it has attached. Now if I change that to distant, distant, uh, where is it? Oh, it's not there, so we will leave it as can coincident on that one. Right. It's not, it's partially constrained. So what I now need to do is find a different surface. Now, I chose this surface that is highlighted, glide surface F25, and I chose this surface. Those two would meet, would want to touch each other. So let's do that. So scroll in, choose a surface I want, the attachment string, that's what we'll call it. And that surface, left click, is now fully constrained. It's done by a distance, 23.61. That is how far those two surfaces are from each other, which is fine. I can now put that at zero and it will touch. So only two constraints needed to fully constrain that into position. Okay. Um, what's great about this is later on I can, I might want to do an exploded view and I can send that LED out by a set amount and take another render of it. So for now I'll set, leave that where it should be which is zero and I'll click OK and my LED is in place. Right, I also have a battery that's going to go into this cylindrical area here. Three volt battery, uh, again modelled earlier. Uh, I'm going to rotate that battery so I've roughly got it where I want. Uh, I'm going to and look under the battery, choose the bottom surface, off it so what I need to do now is right click edit definition choose that bottom surface choose the surface I want it to touch okay that's a distance of zero so I'm happy with that uh, now I'm going to choose that surface of my model and the side surface, the, cyl the cylindrical side. And now it's saying it's fully constrained and it's forced it into where I want it. Um, I'll press OK and I've got two parts in. On this model, we also have a sponge component. Um, 
this allows the LED to not touch the battery until it has been pressed. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose the front plane and I'm going to choose, so you can choose planes or surfaces. In fact, you can choose anything that you think will help it go into the position you want it to. So I'm clicking them together and that's now aligned my sponge surface. I'm now going to rotate up. I'm going to take the bottom surface. You can see the string. I'm clicking on my middle wheel to rotate and now I want to touch that top surface there. And that should force the sponge down closer. And then my final location, it's only partially constrained. I'm going to try the cylinder, the side cylinder, because I know it's in line, centrally in line with this cylinder. I'll just, so we can see that better there. And now it's that's position. So it took me three constraints to do that. And press OK. And I have that. Um, right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in the key ring. And this is useful for distance, using the distance tool. Assembly. Uh, I've modelled a ring here, the key ring earlier okay randomly place now this surface is in the center is the top in line with the top so I'm going to choose that and I'm going to attach to yeah that surface there that plane rotating plane and I'm going to make that a coat in the center okay now I'm going to take the right plane here and I need a right plane oh, I need a center so right down the center it's a front now that's distance so we're going to call that coincidence and that has now fired that in there I'm partially constrained I now want this one and I want any upright so I'll take that that's fully constrained with a distance I definitely want this one as a distance because now if we watch the ring here if I take that 30 gone in that's not so let's see what we can just turn it that way Thirty two. Ah, there you go. That should do it. In case it's going through the hole, and I can control where that is by the distance. It's fully constrained. Okay. Now, the final part is the top. Um, Thing is this one here, yeah. so glide part zero zero two. Double click. Okay, straight away. It's in the wrong orientation, so I'm going to use the blue light blue line to flip it round. Uh, there you go. And I'm going to just bring that roughly close together. And first of all. Now I've got lots of components that I could use. Uh, I have studs, okay, locator pins. They would be ideal. Take the cylinder, rotate round, and I know it's going in here, so that will put that in line. And I think really that you know working with cylinders is the best because they, if they have been modelled in line, they will they will work. And now really I only need to make this touch this surface 
what I definitely want to do is make this a distance. Okay, at the moment it's coincident. I want that as distance. And the reason for this is that if I just do one mil, okay, it, I can leave a slight gap to show a split line. So uh, point five, and you can see it close. And you can see the model has that split line um, and the LED is there too. Um, all of these you can turn off. Let's see. And what I'm going to do is a quick screen render. Uh, Okay, it's just a quick screen rendering. Obviously, it'll take a lot <coughs> more time and do the proper rendering, but we can see that it's coming together. Um, that concludes the assembly tutorial.